Hey everybody, Corey at Gemini Guitar and we're back for another post-rock shoegaze type of lesson I guess you might say. Now the first thing is we're going to have to tune the guitar to this specific tuning. The way it's going to work is the low sixth and the first string are going to be tuned to E flat. I might have said E6 in the beginning but it's actually E flat. And sorry I got the first string wrong, it's actually C. I would recommend using a tuner for this and you're tuning down to C, so it's two steps down from the E. Six is E flat. And then we've got B flat. Another E flat for the fourth string. We've got a G, which is normal, so we don't change that. And then string two is gonna go down a half step to B flat. So you can pretty much get a good result straight out of the box, so to speak. No fingers required. But what we're going to look at here is the scale tones on all of the strings because once you get to grips with those, I'll show you, you'll be able to uh, basically start droning with the rest of the strings. So if we start on string one, what we're going to do then is we're going to work up through the scale all the way up to our octave of C. So we're going to do, and I'm not going to name the notes, we'll just look at the position. So we'll strum through all the open strings to the open first string. And we'll play fret two and three. We'll just use the same finger to move up. We've got five. You can strum all the other strings as well if you want. Seven, eight, ten. Now, if you want to go again up another octave for these two, I like to do that, then it'll be 14 and 15. Now, the reason this note sounds good here is because it's actually an E flat note. I open string C, whole step we go to fret two is D, and E flat. So we're reverting the chord back to just an E flat major chord. We take the middle off, E flat six. So it's pretty cool. Let's do the second string and we're going to do open two. Miss that one, but we'll do it again. Four and five. Seven, nine, ten, twelve, and we might do a couple more. So we'll do fourteen, sixteen, and again this note here. Let's uh, figure out what it is. We got B flat, B, C, D, and again E flat. So. Fifth fret on the uh, second string is E flat, which is kind of easy to figure out because when you think about it, the second string is only tuned a half step down. So normally that's E at the fifth fret, so obviously then it's an E flat. Let's do string three. Open fret one, three, five, seven, eight. 10, 12, we'll keep going a bit, 13, 15, 17, 19, and then we get to 20, that's our E flat note. sounds pretty good just playing from six to three too. So we've got a little bit to go. We're going to do the fourth string. So we've got open again. Two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven this time. Been doing a lot of ten and then twelve. 
finally then we've got the fifth string so we'll do open and I'm only strumming from the sixth to the fifth because I want to emphasize the the changing melodies as we go two four five seven nine ten again and twelve missed it If you want to just do six on its own, you can do that. Remembering it's not the same as string one like it would be as in standard tuning. So we've got E flat and let's proceed. Now remember that's in the transcription, whether it's the Guitar Pro or the PDF. So you'll be able to use that as we, um, as we go along. As far as like the picking pattern I was doing in that performance, it's really basically just uh, there's a couple of things about it. The first one is I, I originally, and I ended up just keeping it, but uh, preferably when you record it, because there's already a bass line going, you probably wouldn't do the bass note just because it just adds a bit of muddiness to the mix of things. But when you're playing on your own, uh, it actually sounds better because you're emphasizing the progression. So what I did was, uh, actually to begin with, we did the natural harmonics. So we're gonna start on fret seven on the first and the second string. And I'm not getting these today, I don't know why. Yeah, that's better. This pick's actually a bit different. It's got some grooves in it. It's an attack pick and I find sometimes it, I'm still getting used to using it. So I'm kind of, sometimes it just gets kind of caught in the string and I don't quite get the result I want. Yeah, it sort of gets a bit snappy. So I've kind of got to use the side of the pick a bit more. So that's a nice little introduction there. And it's actually technically known as an anacrusis because we're coming in right at the end of the bar. So it's kind of like a one and two and three and four and. And all of those notes are spread out over like a quarter note interval or at least duration, I should say. Uh, and then after that point, we just start from our bass note. So this one here, let's work it out. We have, that's our E flat. step and then we'd have A flat so we're doing an A flat and actually I probably didn't need to do that because all we really need to calculate is how far we tuned each string down and then we can find out where that note is so in this case we tune the string half a step down to E flat so normally the A is there well it's an A flat now I might switch to my treble pick up because it's going to bring out a bit better So really very easy. Um, as far as the picking goes, I like to just go downward for the first three. And the next two up. And then just move your finger another whole step each time. So that's kind of like the vanilla idea. And then what I did was just put in some of those melodic scale tones that we've been looking at this time on string one. didn't go like that. How did it go? Let's play from the top. Sounds like an improviser. That's right. So we used this note at fret 2 on the string 1, fret 3, back to 2 and open the second string. To use upstrokes there just because I find I get a nice um, kind of accent going so the tone's nice and um, the second one or the variation to that ending you just slide in say from about the third fret to the fifth fret and then we can get that variation on that sound all of this is in the transcription Stop at that obviously we've done all the scale tones now so that's the purpose of those is to now the way I would work it particularly if you're new to doing this sort of thing is just try one at a time or a couple at a time and just use them with the open strings and just see what kind of sound you come up with because because we're in that open chord tuning we can get away with a lot more because all the notes sound great like I said straight away the 
only thing that's really going to come up as a question is how full do I want this sound to be? So sometimes you might just want to aim for a more trebly tone. So you'll stick to maybe the third and the second and the first string. And all of that will sound really good over that bass line. And that's the great thing about it. It's a very compositionally friendly progression. It's very difficult to sound bad with this, particularly because we've got all our open strings. So you can't play a wrong open string. That's a huge, huge bonus to begin with. So that's great. The only thing that will become a problem is if you hit one of the notes that aren't part of the scale, and that will kind of sound a bit strange. So you just have to be careful of that. But the more you get familiarized with those by studying the transcription, that'll become a lot easier to do. So let's try out another couple of things just to finish off with. I'll stick to my metal pickup here just to get rid of the noise. Well, let's go for a middle-ish type of sound. So if we start or sort of play with the fourth string and say the, um, the sixth string. just use the scale tone on the fourth string with the third and the second string. This reminds me a lot of Stephen Kilby and I don't I can't remember the other guy's name but from the church they're an Australian band they've been around for a long time but it's very reminiscent of that type of sound and I think um, he uses open tunings a lot as well. Either that or he's just, you know, got this knack for creating open tuning like sounds, but I love that band. I've been into them for a long time. Also Hammock kind of reminds me a bit of that as well. So the Church and Hammock would be, if you like this sort of thing, you haven't heard it before, that those two bands are very good for this sort of thing. And there's a whole bunch more we can do with it, but unfortunately we can't sit here for like an hour and explore everything. So <laughs> we'll uh, wrap it up with that, but uh, Check out the transcription, um, practice with the backing track because you can just, even if you just practice your scale tones, that's a really good thing to do. And it just makes practice a lot more fun and enjoyable. And thanks for supporting me on Patreon. It means a lot to me and I really appreciate it. So until the next lesson, bye for now.